Hi everyone, welcome to Insights Unleashed. Uh, this is the Scribes podcast number two. Uh, today we have my esteemed colleague Gustav and I, along with a special guest, her, Laura Rice. She is renowned in the industry and we are super excited to have her as, as a guest today. Laura's been with us for years in market research operations and has watched the evolution of coding into text analytics to insights and she is at the forefront of uh, product development so Gustav and I are really excited to have her and, and to talk more I know Gustav worked with Laura in different settings as a customer so he probably has a different perspective or yeah I mean, for every I mean for everyone that's our client it, the likelihood of them knowing Laura is pretty high. I mean, I've, I was a client for 10 years and Laura was the person I was talking to. Laura has been responsible for training all of our clients. What is it, 20 plus years now? Yeah, yeah, since uh, uh, 2001. There we go. So there is no one more suitable to, to have here than Laura. Uh, she deals directly with all, all of our complicated stuff and all of our clients. And whenever I need help, demoing something, talking about details and technology, Laura is the one I bring in. So Laura, did we miss anything there? Or do you want to add something <laughs> no. about yourself? <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Um, so really um, honored to be in this podcast at the beginning, uh, excited to see where it goes. Um, really interested in discussing AI technology with Chrissy and Gustav today with both of you. And um, yeah, I hope that we have some fun and unearth some some fun, interesting facts about Ascribe and where we're going as a company and what our software does today. So I think today we're going to talk about the journey of how coding has evolved over the years and then uh, even how Ascribe has evolved. So probably all of us in this setting have been in coding when paper and pencil was relevant and that's how we process things and and then everything went online and then the online tools became more efficient and of course Ascribe has been at the beginning of all of it and we really have changed an industry um, even though coding is that small part of the market research industry and process it really is important so we have been part of that and has have changed an entire process. Yeah, and I mean, our goal has always been to increase the speed and efficiency of coding and making it faster and cheaper. And I think everyone here and everyone listening would agree that AI is the way to go moving forward. Um, we, we did brainstorm a little bit before and we talked about everything from high to AI, human intervention with AI. And that's what we're going to try to talk about today in, an, in a loose way. Um, and the scribe, I mean, we, we have quite a few different AI products available today that are being used. And the beauty is that people like me, Chrissy and Laura, that comes from coding that, as Chrissy mentioned, have been coding on pen and paper and Excel and whatnot. We get to test all of these things before, provide our feedback and nothing is released before we, we, we like it. And I mean, the AI we've gone through since I've been with Ascribe for almost five years now, it has developed a lot, so I'm going to stop talking. Gustav, you you touch on a really good point. Laura's going to probably talk about this as well. Uh, not only has the product evolved, but our people have evolved. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how people um, are still relevant and needed and how the our customers and our service team drive the innovation in Ascribe. So that's another important piece that we probably all don't think about in the day to day, except for the people processing the information. But, you know, really the results, the product and the people are what make us so successful. Yeah, and Chrissy, when you're talking about innovation, you know, one of the things that um, the reasons I love working with Ascribe and working with our customers is that they always bring to us the things they need, <clears throat> what they're seeing in the marketplace, um, what they need to, you know, hey, we've got this new type of job. How are how is Ascribe going to going to help us with this? And you know, we started this um, machine learning kind of natural language processing journey back in 2008, <clears throat> and at the time. You know, we had a culture around coding that wasn't accepting of machine learning. 
Um, we we had whole conferences around it. Um, we had we had some success with it. Our customers had some sex success with it. But ultimately, we um, we you know sunsetted that product and then you know started fresh um, over the past five to six six I'd say five years over the past five years um, and really started focusing on a codebook builder and using using those um, that technology the the innovations like you know to create a codebook builder which became AI classifier which became AI coder um, you know and in the meantime we added our you know uh, the really cool tool that we have now in Ascribe Coder the coding assistant that kind of suggests things based on machine learning um, and then from that we went to our lightning mode so with coding assistant it suggests as you code and then lightning mode uses you know deep machine learning to suggest codes for all of your uncoded data based on comparisons you know based on semantic algorithms um, and that's all built into a scribe coder today and we've had that for a couple of years but then um, with generative ai when that came out you know at first everybody's like no we can't do this we don't want our data going there we don't want to we don't want to, you know, we we really need manual coding. But what we found is the industry and the culture has changed, and and we're becoming more accepting of the AI. And those of us that are kind of grasping onto it and leaning into it are realizing that um, it's making our jobs more relevant because mm -hmm. we have that that intelligence, the human intelligence that um, Gustav mentioned before. We have this this um, special, these special skills to go in and oversee the results of the AI as if we were overseeing the results of a new coder in some cases, or, you know, um, a mediocre coder in some cases, I would even say, <laughs> right? I mean, let's, let's just be completely honest. Um, we're not gonna just let this thing loose. Um, and that's, that's kind of talking about that relevance. And Chrissy, I know you've seen some of that with some of the projects that you've been doing recently. Mm -hmm. Laura, you make a really good point in that it's it, it's we are helping to drive the innovation with the product. Um, the coders have direct insight into what is working well and wasn't isn't working well. And right. I think that the ability for us to have connections with you and the dev team uh, really helps us evolve our product to be the best in class. So I think that service piece of it and the people like you and our service team, our eyes in it really do help give the developers insight. We're not just copying some other program. We're we're customizing our AI to perform the best that it can be. So it's really important. All right, Laura, what makes us unique at Ascribe in terms of our AI product? You know, I think um, there's a couple of things that make us unique at Ascribe um, in terms of our AI. Uh, one of the one of the biggest um, one of our the biggest benefits for us, or one of our biggest advantages, is years of manual coding, and um, the fact that we've provided software to users to get to that end result as quickly as possible with the, you know, accuracy, um, efficiency, and just really easy, easy to do um, processes or easy to implement processes. Um, we work very closely with our customers. Um, also, we have a team of developers that are into AI and what's going on in the world, staying, staying on top of innovations and technology. Um, and they're able to react very quickly, very agilely, agi very agile to um, to bring that to to the software. So that's that's one thing. It's like our history and our development team. Um, but the reason I think that we're having the success we're having with AI is that we are continually interacting with our customers. Um, we have a developer on our team who makes sure that he's bringing in other aspects. Um, we're not just looking at generative AI. We've always been expansive in the technologies that we're using, and I'll call them the algorithms that we're using to um, process the data. Um, we're giving customers options because sometimes you might be coding say a brand list or small one word two word answers and in those cases you're you're not going to want generative ai saying oh okay coca-cola is a soft drink or a soda pop or whatever 
whatever you're calling it that day, right? You're going to want Coca-Cola to be categorized as Coca-Cola in your brand list. So in those cases, we give the, the customers options to use our non-generative um, AI. So we're still using some of these deep machine learning technologies, um, but we're then using the generative more to, to help us with some of the netting and other things that we would do, right? So we're using a combination of tools. We're not relying on one thing, and we're using that combination of tools and building on the knowledge, the history, the deep roots that we have in market research and in manual coding. So um, yeah, those are, those are some of the things that I think kind of set us ahead of the game with AI. If I may segue into the next thing here, um, I've trained a lot of people over the years in coding. And when I trained them, I said, you can do whatever you want. Just be prepared of arguing why you added that code. And the two mm -hmm. things you cannot tell me is one, I did not do that. Because if there's one thing that the scribe does, it logs everything by the second. Uh, the second thing is, I don't know. Those were the only things that were forbidden for new coders to tell me. Uh, and since I'm in Germany, let's speak about fears. My biggest issue with AI is that I can't ask it, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. And it is this black box and most of the things make sense. And sometimes you're blown away like, wow, not even I would have come up with that, but that is more exact than what I would have done. Um, the, the way we combat that is that we, once again, we log everything and we have let's call it the master edit mode that we can change, we can undo, we can redo. Those buttons are very helpful, but also once it's exported and processed, we can still go in with a human and have a human review 100% of it. We can change, we can rename, we can basically undo everything that AI did, but we cannot ask it, why did you do that? Uh, Laura, what are the other fears that, that you're hearing from, from clients that like AI is here to take my job or Mm. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, um, we did hear a lot of, well, why why would I want AI to do this? Um, you know, that's my job. <laughs> um, that is still, I do still see that as a fear sometimes when we're working with, <clears throat> sorry, I do see that as a fear sometimes when we're working with um, the coding team. Um, and it's not always expressed but you'll see it acted upon, you know, um, where they'll, they'll, there's, there's instances where um, the, the intention is to prove that AI is not as good as, as humans. And we know this, we kind of know this, we know that. And so one of the ways we're like, you're right. Um, AI does still need the human, the human intervention though. Um, the other fear, as you said before, Gustav was data security. And we've got that, you know, as you said, we have, we have the document for that. Um, and really what I'm seeing more is the trusting of what the AI does. Um, thinking, well, if I'm going to have to quality check this hundred percent, you know, why would I use AI anyway? And some of the things that you were just talking about, you know, we, we've we we've put things in place so that that's not necessary. Um, and Chrissy, I want you to follow up and talk a little bit about this and what, what you do in your process. So we do show the piece of the response. So we actually make sure we show which piece of the response caused this code to be applied, okay? We don't always know exactly why that, you know, certain certain ideas are clustered together to create a code, but we're, we're giving more insight into that. In our last release, we actually put in a, um, a, couple, of, a couple of checks for our testing team that we left in place for customers that were interested that actually show you, well, okay, if you set this, this setting to like, um, you know, to a higher number, you're going to get more accurate results, but they're going to be more concise and therefore less is going to be coded. And we actually show you where that's like in action. So we're, we're working to alleviate some of the, um, some of those kind of concerns, I wouldn't really call them fears, concerns that um, AI isn't up to snuff, that AI doesn't, you know, that it's not going to do some of the heavy lifting that we expect it to do. So Chrissy, um, tell me about how you're using some of the newer tools or your experience with the newer tools in AI and how that qualms some of your, maybe your concerns. 
Yeah, absolutely, Laura. So there is a trust factor and you want to do things right. You don't want to send work out wrong and have it questioned because it starts to question the product, the service, you know, what kind of results are you delivering to me? What am I going to do with this? Well, these options for more concise or accuracy, but less coded is really a great option when you when you are in a pinch in a fourth quarter, let's say, you know, we're all in the market research industry. We know what happens. Sometimes you need this AI that is more accurate and concise to get you preliminary code books sent off in the middle of the day that is unexpected. It has saved us many, mm. many times to meet certain deliverables. On the flip side of that, if you chose less, uh, if you choose less accuracy and coded more, I think it depends on the type of project. You know, you probably would never want to put a medical project in here that's with the FDA or a clinical trial or a legal project, but maybe something that the customer's like, you know, I really don't care. Uh, I don't need all that precision. I just want almost we call it net level or category level mm -hmm. coding. Um, they don't care about all those details. They just need something quickly to help support other data. So I think having the option for me and Gustav in the service, having those options really helps us to figure out or determine what projects are really best, what time of the year, what season of the year, what kind of customer you're speaking to. So I feel like Ascribe has these these options that others don't. You know, it's it's not so rigid anymore. Yeah, and uh, I hope you won't disagree with me now, but let's say 10 years ago, it was unheard of, at least where I'm from, that you did not code the whole sample. It always had to be 100%. And now with AI, we, we talked about that earlier today as well, like when, when, when trains replaced horses. Yeah, some horses were, retired, but but the, you could transport more goods at the same time. And now instead of interviewing 150 or 250 people, bring in 10,000 and maybe, yeah, you don't have to code 100%, but you get a more statistically relevant result uh, still by using humans. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Gustav, I agree with that. And sometimes it's, it's just that percent that they need to support other data, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that's it's interesting that you mentioned that, Gustav, because another another thing that I see is, um, you know, we we have erred on the side of giving more more information than less. Um, so in all of our previous products, when the previous um, machine learning products, when something was partially coded, we had no idea. We didn't know if there were pieces of the response that weren't coded and people had a lot of concern over that you know it's like well i'm how how will i ever know that this thing is finished um and today that's why we add this special kind of uh, i call it the uncoded segments it's called others in ai but it's really our uncoded segments and sometimes it's overkill because every segment that hasn't received a code is there and there might be some redundancy but it really allows us to go in quite quickly and see if anything was missed, right? We can like look at the keywords and like break out some new codes. Again, that human oversight. And there was, again, there's always a little bit of, when people see that that others down there with a high number, they're like, oh, but there are ways to deal with that. And that is that is what, you know, my team and, and you all, like that's kind of what we're working on kind of is in the culture of, you know, does it all need to be coded 100%? Um, what is the end goal here? Uh, I just had a customer that I was working with and they really just wanted top 10 nets, top 10 themes, but netted themes, like overarching themes. And we got there really quickly with, you know, uh, 9,000 responses and got there within, I mean, it was a three hour process, but she got there. So, you know, that's, that's um, kind of addressing what you two were talking about and kind of bringing it back to one of the other kind of where people are like, oh, wait, that number is kind of high, but we do that on purpose because without that, we've got a black box that you can't get into and you can't see, you know, well, where are the things partially coded? Um, and this is another place where, yeah, we need human insight and we need we need intelligence around, you know, what the end goal is and the ability to the tools to quickly, you know, course correct or make this a better analysis overall. 
That's a great segue into the, the final question for you, Laura um, and Gustav. Uh, where do you see uh, AI and where we are headed with AI in the, in the future? That's really exciting. Um, you know, I get to I get to participate with the product team and kind of figure out where we need to go, um, listen to the market, um, see what's going on with our customers and with some of the other tools that are out there. And so some of the things that I know are on the horizon for us is um, currently, you know, we're connecting our API to our AI tools. Um, that's that's coming out here in a couple of weeks. Um, not set time or set up. But anyway, um, but the big, big thing that we're working on is this AI assist or this um, the AI summarizer where we'll get to um, right out of the gate, know a little bit about what's going on with our data. Uh, I actually had a request yesterday uh, that someone wanted to say, OK, just look at all of my data sets from the previous three years and tell me the things people are most positive about and the things people are most negative about. So they want to be able to to really mine or dig into previous like all of their all of their previous projects and kind of just interview the data and that's that's what we're working on right now is this tool that will allow you to interview the data give you some key insights right out of the gate um and then you know you can follow up with the manual coding to get to get the the precise concise accurate results that back up what what the summarizer or AI assist is doing. So that's a big that's a big area of innovation for us right now. Um, we're taking our time and we're doing it right. Um, we're using our market research knowledge to make sure that that what we're giving is is not um, the AI hallucinations that you see, you know, you hear about like, you know, AI just kind of going completely batty. We're trying to make sure that that the results that it gives are relevant, um, and that we're we're giving our customers a product that will really solve a need for them. So I see us moving more toward that. Um, that I see I see AI growing. The technology is continuing to grow. I was just looking. Um, I was just looking, and you know, like GPT five is planned now. Like there's there's all these other large language models going on, and our development teams kind of staying abreast of all of that, um, making sure that they they know we're using the tool that works best for us. Um, the biggest thing for me, you know, if I just talk product wise right now, is um, just continuing to monitor what the AI is doing and tweaking our programming you know we've got a team that that will 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 actually go in and say okay the ai changed this way now we have more complex segments coming out we want simpler segments so we had to do a little course correction so that was our second episode mm -hmm. uh as last time we look forward to hearing any feedback um we did promise that we're gonna appear with guests and I think we deliver today with Laura. So <laughs> Laura, thank you very much for, for taking the time joining us. Uh Chris and me and Laura, we, we meet quite regularly anyway. So this Great. was a nice discussion. We we will continue doing so. And uh, as we said last time, uh all feedback is, is greatly appreciated. If you want to appear on our podcast, feel free to reach out to any of us. And if you want to know more about our products, visit goscribe.com or email me, Chrissy or Laura, and we'll be happy to talk to you more in the future. Thank you everyone for coming and thank you, Chrissy and Laura for making my last meeting of the day being even more pleasant.